Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, it seems we've become very reliant on cloud services. From Google to Microsoft to Amazon to Dropbox, we seem to be storing so much up in the cloud, photos, data and documents. Now there is a way to become less reliant on the cloud and to actually become more independent and have control over your own data. And to do that today, I'm gonna to be looking at a Synology NAS, the DS220 Plus. We'll do a quick review of how that device works and look at how we can use a Synology NAS drive to free ourselves from cloud services and take over our own destiny on what we do with our data. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. I'd like to thank Synology for sponsoring this video. So what is a NAS, Network Attached Storage? Well, it is what it says on the can. It is storage, that can probably hard drives, it can of course also be SSDs that are connected to your network. Now, every device that we use uh, daily has some kind of storage from your smartphone to your desktop to your laptop. There's some kind of storage in there and that's where you store things locally. However, it remains local. It's not shared anywhere else on your network. When you're using network attached storage, that means that storage is available to anyone across your network. And of course, you get control over how you set up the permissions about which people and which devices have access to that data. So it means that your smartphone can access data on a NAS, your desktop can access it, your laptop can access it, and even a smart TV can access it. Now I have here on this channel a review of the Synology DS420J and I use it absolutely every single day. Now I wanted to give you an example, I mentioned about you can access it from your smart TV. Here in our house, if for example we want to show pictures of something, like a wedding, to uh, some guests, of course you can all just kind of gather around a small smartphone and look at a tiny screen, or we already have the photos on my uh, Synology uh, disk station and so our smart TV is able to connect to it and then we can have a slideshow and also of course the videos that are taken from that event are all there and we can watch it together in a bigger room on a bigger TV and it's a much much better experience than trying to all huddle around a tiny little screen. And that's just one example of what you can do when you have your own network attached storage in your house that you can use across all your devices. So the Synology Disk Station 220 Plus is a two-bay uh, network attached storage unit. It comes with a dual-core Celeron processor that bursts up to 2.9 gigahertz, and it comes with two gigabytes of RAM. And this is one of the great things about the Plus series, and we'll talk about the different types of series that Synology have. Uh, you can upgrade the RAM in the Plus series on many of the models. So this one can actually be upgraded to six gigabytes of RAM. Then you get dual gigabit Ethernet ports, and that can be used for link aggregation or for uh, failover setups, depending on how you've got your local network set up. Of course, you've got USB 3.2 generation one uh, and so on. And then of course, on top of that, you've got the software, and we'll talk more about the software uh, in a moment, because that is really key in, of course, getting all your data onto the uh, NAS drive and of course, how you manage it and use it. Now, of course, the key to network attached storage is the storage. So in this case, this is a two bay device because you can put in two hard drives. Now, why would you wanna put in two hard drives? There are one bay models available, but the key about having two hard drives is that you can use RAID, which basically means you can set them up in such a way that the data is replicated on multiple drives. And I have videos here on this channel explaining different aspects of RAID. But using it in a two disk setup, basically imagine it like this, what goes on one disk, also goes on the second disk. And that has two key advantages. One is if a disk fails, the data is still on the other disk, so you haven't lost it. And the other advantage, of course, you've got speed. When you want to read, copy a data off the, the NAS over somewhere else, if you are watching uh, videos, if you're editing documents, whatever you're using it for, the read speed is doubled because it can read from both drives simultaneously. So in this instance, I'm using two eight terabyte Ironwolf drives from Seagate. You can get them up to 16 terabytes. And there are some good reasons to use the Ironwolf drives. The first being they are designed specifically for using in network attached uh, storage, especially in setups, both consumer and commercial that run 24 by seven. In fact, the mean time between failure is measured as a million hours. So you do the calculation for that to see how long these drives can work spun up 
24 by 7. Secondly, you get access to the Iron Wolf health management system and the Synology understands that and is able to interrogate that advanced health system that's above and beyond what you get in a standard hard drive. And thirdly, you get access to Seagate's free data recovery system. If the absolute worst should happen, three years worth of free data recovery, depending on the model that you buy and your geographic location. Now, installing drives on the DS220 Plus is an absolute breeze. You literally just pull out the plastic tray, pop in the hard drive, put the plastic clips on, no screws, no screwdriver needed here. You put in the plastic clips, you stick it back into the NAS, you do that twice, and then the first time round, you can actually just initialize it and set it up however you want. And if one fails, you can actually do hot swapping, which means you can pull out one of the drives, the one that's failed, you can put in a new drive, you can put it back in, and then the NAS will actually uh, sort out the copying of the data so that after a few hours, because we're talking about terabytes here, your both drives again will have all your data on it. Now, as I said, we'd mentioned the different series. There are four different series of NAS drives available from Synology for home users, prosumers, and for small offices. They have rack mount stuff as well, which we won't go into today. Now, the first series is the J series. In fact, I have the review, as I said earlier, of the 420J. So that is the most affordable, the entry level device. It means you're gonna get an ARM processor for controlling all of that NAS stuff one uh, port, one gigabit ethernet port, you're gonna go and get one gigabyte of RAM, but fully functional and does exactly what it says on the box. Now, if you want a bit more power, you can go up to the value series and the big difference is here, you still got the ARM processor, but it has hardware transcoding. And that's important if you have files in different formats, H.264, H.265, and you need to convert them because, for example, your smart TV only understands H.264, but the files in H.265, it will do hardware transcoding on the fly, which means no interruptions when you're watching the video. And you get two gigabytes of RAM, of course, it's great when you've got lots of users connecting to your device, lots of things going on. Now, after that, you get the Plus series, and that's what this new device that I'm reviewing is, the DS220 Plus. That means now you move away from an ARM processor to an Intel processor. It also means you get things like the dual gigabit ethernet. You've got the option to upgrade the RAM. And then at the top of the range, you've got the XS series, which really does max everything out. You know, you can have up to 48 gigabytes of RAM in some models. You can get uh, four gigabit ethernet ports or even 10 gigabit ethernet ports. You can use uh, SSDs for caching. So it really is a monster of a device, uh, I suppose, for people who are doing professional stuff at home or in an office. Now, all of these NASs across the whole range use the, basically the same software, the Disk Station Manager. And it gives you a web interface to allow you to manage and control and use your network attached storage. Now, next to that, there are a whole bunch of apps, for example, on iOS and on Android, as well as the web interface that you can use to access and manage the data on your NAS. Now, the classic way to use network attached storage is sharing it on a Windows network. And that basically means inside of Windows, you type in backslash backslash, and then the name of the server, and then it will just show you all the different folders that have been shared. Of course, there is authentication, permissions, who has access to those different folders, particularly if you've got different members in your family or it's a small office setup, you can control who has access to what. And then from there, you can basically just use the folders. You can copy them back and forth or you can use them on the NAS and Windows understands how to do that completely. Uh, and so, for example, if you have a laptop with a smaller amount of storage and you want to access files that are on the NAS, you don't need to copy them onto your laptop. You just use them over the network and it works absolutely flawlessly. Now, a classic way that we can use a NAS from our smartphones is for photo backup. Now, a lot of people back up their photos onto Google Photos, onto iCloud, but once you go past a certain limit, you have to start paying for those. And of course, that can be actually quite expensive because it's a reoccurring fee absolutely every single month. And if you've got a whole family of people, you know, there are five people in this household and they all want their photos backed up, that can be quite expensive. However, if you have a NAS drive, you can back up all the photos locally. Now, there are apps available from Synology for iPhone and for Android that just basically allows you to back up your photos onto the NAS and to view the photos that are on the NAS and therefore to free up space that you have on your local device without having to pay every single month for something in the cloud for somebody else to look after your photos. Now, other than sharing data to your laptop or PC, other than showing photos on your smart TV, backing up the photos from your smartphone, there are a whole bunch of other ways of using the NAS. There are a whole bunch of collaboration tools uh, that allow you to do all kinds of really clever things on your own cloud service. Basically, if you can do it in the cloud, you can also do it 
on a local network attached storage. So there are collaboration tools. You can write documents, spreadsheets, presentations. There's even a chat server, GitHub server, virtual machines, a web server. I mean, the list really is quite impressive. In fact, I could almost do a different video about each of those different types of functionality. So what have we covered? There's a thing called network attached storage. That storage is available on your network, available to your PC, to your laptop, to your smartphones, and even to devices like a smart TV. Data that's there can be copied back and forth, and it can also be used directly on the NAS drive itself. Great way for performing backups, backups of the data that you've got on your PC, backups of things like photos, music, videos that you have on your smartphone. And then they are accessible wherever you want throughout your network. And all this is aided by a comprehensive ecosystem of software, some of it web-based, some of it directly native on your smartphone, iOS and Android. And let's not forget that NAS units with multiple drives can be set up in such a way that there is redundancy so that data that is on one drive is copied automatically and used automatically from a second drive. And of course, you can get multiple bay devices. For example, again, I'll mention the review I have here of the 420J has got four drive bays in it. So an absolutely great level of flexibility. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. And I also have a newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address. You won't get any spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.